Well, good morning. Well, I don't know about you, but as mentioned previous times, I like to put myself into stories when I read the Bible. And there's a few stories in the Bible that I really relate to, just for my personality. And some of those characters are Joseph from the Old Testament. My brothers were always jealous of me. (laughs) And given the fact that my name, first name really is Joseph, you know, that always helped a little bit. And then the brother to the prodigal son, the one that stayed around and did all the good. (laughs) Why his brother went and did bad things. That was me. (laughs) And here in the story, we have the rich young ruler. Not the rich part. But here he is saying, I've kept all these things, commandments, since I was a youth. You might see a theme developing here about myself when I was younger. I thought more highly of myself than I ought to. All right? Well, that's okay. God uses that when I read the Bible and says, it's okay. I still love you. <laughs> All right? But when we read the story here of the rich young ruler, and you hear these things, do not lie, do not defraud, do not commit adultery, do not murder. You know, these are all good things, right? Do not honor your mother, or honor your mother and your father. <laughs> Now, my parents are here, and I hope they will agree with me that I did my best to honor them and continue to. However, you know, I do fall short of the glory of God, like everyone. But for the most part, when we see these things, we're like, wow, this guy's really good. Of course, why, why is he even asking Jesus, what must I do to inherit eternal life. When you read these, you say, hey, his works show that he deserves to be in, the he- be in heaven. Now, as I, as I mentioned, I always tried to honor my father and mother, but because I had, I don't know what you want to call it, pride, arrogance. I was a big head. I thought I knew everything. (laughs) Thanks, pops. But I had, I had this when I was growing up, when I was, you know, first really started taking on my walk with God for my own. When I was around, you know, probably 13, 14 years of age. I really began to, like, focus on what must I do to inherit the kingdom of heaven, just like this rich young ruler. I was caught up in the works. I was caught up in following, you must do this to get there, right? So I threw out all my CDs that weren't Christian, I broke them. I refused to watch certain movies. You know, I didn't use bad language. I tried not to use bad language. I was hyper focused on making sure that my appearance was squeaky clean on the outside. I wanted, when I walked the halls in high school, that people would know that I was a Christian because of what I did. I was so big headed and arrogant that I actually confronted my dad one time. I was about 16 years of age. God forbid we were having pizza one night 
and my dad had a beer to go with it. Now, he was of legal drinking age. Let's just get that clear. You know, I can't remember exactly how old he was when I was 16, but I remember him having some grays even at that point. After dinner that night, I said, Dad, I was wondering if we could have a talk. <laughs> now, in my house, growing up, when someone said, or when my dad had said, I should say, son, we need to have a bedroom talk. That meant like we're going to go have a closed door discussion and I don't want anyone else to hear it because you're in trouble. So I said to my dad, dad, we need to have a talk. And I remember saying, dad, I don't remember the exact words I said, but the gist of it was, you're a Christian. You lead praise and worship. You should not drink. <laughs> yeah, that, so when I say that I had a little bit of pride and arrogance in my life at that point in time, maybe a little bit still I'm working on, but that is what I'm talking about. Now, my dad did graciously, did not slap me upside the head. I don't remember the outcome of that conversation, but basically, I'm a grown-up. You're still 16. <laughs> I appreciate you sharing your thoughts and feelings, but they are incorrect. <laughs> that was the basic gist. And I remember being mad. I was so mad. I'm like, Dad. Like, in my head, like, I, don't, I think at that point, he probably gave me the, you know, the the fear of God look that only parents can give their kids. I didn't say anything after that, you know, but I remember being in my, like, in my head being so upset that my dad, that I truly loved and just wanted him to inherit eternal life with me. would not heed my warning. I mean, I was like John the Baptist. <laughs> Repent from your evil ways. <laughs> Turn to God. <laughs> That's just a little insight into me and my walk. So when I say I could relate to these characters in the Bible... Minus Joseph, I don't think he was, he was arrogant. This is why God uses these stories for me uh, to kind of draw some stuff out. Now, I'm still a work in progress, as I said, but I did come at some point in my walk with Jesus, come to realize that it wasn't all about the works that I did. And it transformed into a relationship. You see, what I was doing back then in my high school days and middle school is I was following a religion. There was a set of rules, and I made sure to follow as many as I could. And along the way, get on my soapbox and tell people when they weren't doing the right thing, right? I believe it came from a good part of my heart, you know, that... I did want people to know Jesus or be a Christian or c confess to be a Christian, not necessarily know Jesus, because if they truly knew Jesus, they would know what I was doing was not showing love, right? So then when I had that realization that it was a relationship, I still struggled with other scriptures in the Bible. Because there was still a part of me that was like, hey, you messed up. What's wrong with you? If you love Jesus, 
You wouldn't do that, but you did. So I, I would still like kind of get tripped up on verses like Romans 6, 23. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Praise God for that scripture. But I was focused on the wages of sin is death. And when, I, when you focus on that, and I'm not disputing the word of God, please, because the wages of sin is death. But fortunately, God gives us other scriptures in the Bible that to describe more of what he was referring to. You see, if you look at the list of sins that Jesus gave the rich young ruler that he said, oh, I've kept since I was a youth. Now, we have to say that, you know, unless he was really a liar, but when he said, I've kept all these as a youth, one of those things was do not lie. So we have to assume that he wasn't lying, that he was a really good guy. But if you notice, all of those scriptures have to do with what we call in the summary of the law was to love your neighbor as yourself. There's a whole other portion of commandments that were not listed. Right? And those are the ones that have to do with loving God. You see, Jesus was confronting him about his relationship with God. He was confronting him, have no other idols before you. I am the Lord your God. He was confronting those things, the relational aspect of our faith. And I would, you know, as I got older and I started reading the scriptures, I would find other things like we've read here in Hebrews this morning. It was Hebrews 4, 14 through 16. Seeing then that we have a great high priest who has passed through heavens, Jesus the Son of God, let us hold fast our confession. For we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weakness, but in all points tempted as we are, yet without sin. Let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy, find grace to help in time of need. You see, that is the God we serve. Does he want us not to go out and commit murder? Yeah, that's, that'd probably be a good thing not to do, right? Does he not want us to go out and rob a bank? Yeah, also probably a good thing not to do. However, what he is saying is when you do mess up, when you do sin, go to him and you will find that mercy and grace. Now, once again, this is not a hall pass, right? It's not go out and sin boldly and then come back to me, find grace, turn around, go out, sin boldly because it's all good. Jesus is just all right with me, hippie, like, hey, it's all good, man. I still love you, bro, right? That's not what I'm saying. But what I am saying is that if you're truly following God and you have that relationship with him, those things are going to come naturally, more naturally not to do anymore. The deeper you get in love with God and with Jesus, the easier it is to say no to things that are tempting. So what you have to do is focus on your relationship with God. You have to make sure that you're in communion with him. And how do we do that? By coming together on Sundays, partaking of the bread and wine of his body and blood, by reading his scripture, by spending time with him, by spending time with other Christians, 
as iron sharpens iron. You see, that's what God is calling us to do. And that's what he was calling the rich young man to do. He said, go and sell all that you have and follow me. Jesus was telling him what he needed to do. You need to follow me. Come have a relationship with me. But the man went away sad because he had great possessions. You see, he had an idol before him that he wasn't willing to let go of. He had something. He had a stumbling block that kept him from following Jesus. You see, he's not ex- God is not expecting this to come perfectly to him. He's not waiting for you to clean up your act before you start following him. He's definitely not, you know, waiting for you to give up that one beer with your pizza before you start following him. He wants you to come now. He wants you to begin now. And when we start following him, that is when he starts working his perfection in us. We are not ever going to make it to Jesus' level. There was a time in my life where I thought I perhaps achieved it. (laughs) But once again, I was blinded by my arrogance. But you know what? Jesus forgave me (laughs) and continues to forgive me. And he just wants, he was waiting for me to turn to him and say, God, help me. (laughs) Get rid of this pride. Right? That's what he wants. So my challenge for all of us today is what's the thing that's holding you back? What is holding you back to fully surrendering to God? What's the thing in your life that's really hard to get rid of? to let go of. May not be money. If you need have money that you want to let go of, I know a few people <laughs> will gladly take it off your hands. It could be a relationship. It could it could there's a n- number of things that could be holding you back. It could be just yourself not willing to allow God to work in you because you're scared because you don't know what that'll look like. And that's okay. God just wants you to come to him. He wants to make you perfect in him. He wants to have a relationship with you. He's not up there with a check mark, like a, a box with a checklist going, oh, oh, yep, they did that, they did that, they did that. He wants to spend time with you. And as you spend time with him, you will then begin to show your love to those around you. And they're not going to just see that people around you are not just going to see, oh, they don't drink, dance, smoke. They're going to see the love of God shining on your face. And they're going to want to know what is different about you. You may not be squeaky clean on the inside, but when you start walking with God and having a relationship with him, your insides begin to change. You see, a lot of times we're worried about that outside appearance like I was. But it's what's on the inside. I, I mean, if you're a parent of any age, you know, that's the thing. You always, it's not what's on the outside that counts. It's what's on the inside. And I'm telling you that, that in this case, it's really true. doesn't matter that you look great on the outside if you're a whitewashed tombstone and you're dead on the inside. So we have to remind ourselves to have that relationship, to draw close to God. 
And if you're not sure where to start to do that, there's a few people in here that are willing to help you with that. That's what's so great about having community. It's because when we're struggling with something, we could reach out to each other and draw closer to God together. Amen? In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Hey, this is Father Scott Loco with Church Messiah. Thanks for watching our video. If you enjoyed it and you got something out of it, please click the like button below. And also, you can click the subscribe button to get notifications in your inbox when we post other videos in the future. You can click the little bell below and you'll get uh, notifications also. So do that and uh, we'd appreciate it. So thanks. God bless you. We appreciate it. Uh, pray for us and we'll be praying for you. God bless you.